Okay, hello everyone, this is Mr. Rob Ronan here again, and today we're here for a beginner's breakdown, or a day one breakdown of Cute Huddle. He's a character that is super, super fun, so fun that I actually have played him kind of more than I should have in the first day. I kind of need to do some other stuff, but I'm doing this now. <laughs> he's a really, really fun character, and I think I'm ready to make a guide for him, because he's not incredibly complex. He reminds me really quite a lot of Tengen when he came out. Um, he's a character that just plays the game Hinokami Chronicles really well. He doesn't have any weird um, changes in gameplay style like Demon Nezuko or um, Daki who all played kind of differently to other characters in this game. Hyutaro, he just plays the game well. He's got, you know, basically every one of his things is kind of normal but they're just good. He's got good attacks, he's got good damage, he's got um, just good stuff and even a kind of interesting good setup tool. So, he's just good. And, um, a quick side note before <laughs> before we get into the breakdowns. This isn't usually part of the video, but I just wanted to mention that I have today uploaded a video called Yutaro is the worst demon in Demon Slayer Hinokami Chronicles, which is a title taken from when Daki came out, and people were very quick to jump to say that she was the worst character in the entire game. And I thought, I thought I was being a little bit funny. I thought my sarcasm was a little obvious. But, um, and, uh, no, and I, I'm glad, I'm glad that there are people who think that calling a character weak on day one is weird. I'm glad that they exist, because it's weird how many people don't think that way. But <laughs> the people that do think that, I thought they would have picked up that my video was a joke as well. You, we're on the same side. We're both making fun of the people that say characters are weak in, like, the first day. But, um, people didn't really notice that. <laughs> and then, in the video... All the comments are like, um, how have you played for 200 hours when he's only been out for one day? Last time I checked, there's only 24 hours in one day. Maybe y'all just suck. This is straight up discrimination against the character, and you should wait a little longer before you judge a book by its cover. Like, okay, damn. I'm sorry. It was- <laughs> we're on the same side. I'm trying to say the same thing as you. <laughs> just want to clarify that if some people still did not realize that, but I think most people did, and it's just- the commenter viewer base that likes to um start feuds but yes i do think that yutaro is a very very strong character yet again i think it's pretty common for these dlc characters to be pretty strong because they don't want to create awful characters that people don't want to buy um it's just not a very smart decision so he's very strong and not only is he strong he's really really fun really really fun and pretty easy to use so now that i've blabbered on for a nice long while Let's get into the video. So, with these breakdowns, we start with the regular attacks into special moves, and then we'll get into combos. But before we do that, I'll just talk about his general game plan. His game plan, like I said before, is nothing special, nothing unique. He's not a zoner or a cash-out character like Demon Nezuko or a weird spacer like Daki. He's just a regular character. He kind of plays very similarly to a Demon Slayer. He's got regular attacks, he does pretty decent damage, um, and he just has, like, kind of a, a few things that make him kind of quirky. So he gets um, poison from basically all of his special moves and demon special moves. And if you don't know how poison work in, in this game, it basically is just a set amount of damage. Um, I think it's about 300 off of all of his special moves. Yeah, about 300 of that little purple on the top right of the screen that slowly depletes. And poison damage is unscaled so you know how when you are doing combos the, the attacks at the end do less damage than they would have done normally poison doesn't do that if you apply it at the very end of a combo it's still going to be the 300 damage but it just depletes slowly um after your combo and that's that's it so you even if it's a super super long combo with tons of scaling at the end which would make any everything do such little damage the poison will still do its full amount of damage and it just does it over time so that's the kind of cool thing about poison. It's nothing massive, but it does get you more damage over time, and it does add up throughout a game. And his other little quirky thing is his projectile. Everything else that he has is pretty um, standard and just good, but this is something that he has that is pretty unique. So he throws out this slow projectile, and it turns into this kind of spinning orb, and then it throws out two projectiles onto the opponent. And um, if Sabito... Um, gets out of the way of it. You can see how it's standing over here, and where is it? Yeah, it sends out these two projectiles that hit him, and then you can actually get a combo off of 
any of the way it hits very, very easily. So it's a really, really interesting, not only like spacing and zoning tool, if you just throw it out in front of you, but if you intentionally make it miss the opponent, maybe by doing a setup like this that I like to do, where it just goes past the opponent, then it's off the screen. They can't get rid of it by bringing out a support or something. And then these projectiles will come in and smack him from behind. And it doesn't even go away on hit. So if Sabito starts to like beat me up here, Sabito has gotten hit by these things, and then I would be able to get a full combo, but I just switched controllers and I'm too slow to do that. <laughs> here, wait, let me try one more time. So Sabito's over here, hitting me with some buttons, la 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 la, and then these things fly in, and then I get to get a full combo, even though I was being hit. So it's kind of like a really delayed um, combo breaker, and it's really, really cool. I don't know why I messed up that combo so bad. But it's really, really cool and lead to, can lead to some kind of cool things. So basically, like as soon as you throw it out, you know that it's going to come and hit the opponent later. You can just be as ridiculous and wild as you want. Run up, go for grabs, go for grabs twice. And if it doesn't hit the opponent, it doesn't matter because if they try to punish you, they're probably going to get hit later. And if the opponent, sometimes they get so patient and they just stand there blocking the entire time. Um, here, wait, get out. Don't get hit by it. Sometimes they're so patient and they just stand there blocking the whole time. So you can just dash up and keep getting dashes in and then their guard's basically instantly broken because you just get to go so for so many free dashes because they're like, oh, I know the projectiles are coming. I just have to stand here and block. And you get to break their guard like instantly just for free. And this also beats a lot of people try to go for grabs because that's the only way you can really um, delete the projectiles because, you know, the cinematic gets rid of them. But um, if you keep doing dashes, there's not actually enough time in between a dash in to go for a grab. So it beats people trying to go for grabs, so you can just break their guard, and if they get hit, you know, you get to go for combos or whatever. But it's it's a really scary situation. You can even throw it out, and you have enough time to go for a DP, and the projectiles will come in and make it safe. It's so cool. I, I really love it. I think there's so much potential to um, get with it. But we'll talk about it more when it's actually it's his turn. But this is just his general gameplay. He... he he plays like a normal character until he has that projectile out and then he can be absolutely as kooky as he wants. And also, talking about kooky and crazy, his tilt special is pretty ridiculous and it's kind of what makes me think of Tengen. Because he can just throw it out, air or ground, and it's just extremely plus. Because he can cancel it into buttons whenever. So like, he can just keep going it into itself over and over and over again. until their guard breaks, and it's pretty ridiculous. If the opponent doesn't know how to deal with it, they're just gonna get absolutely demolished by you because you're gonna break their guard every time you hit them. But um, if they do know how to deal with it, there are ways that you can deal with them dealing with you. And the way they deal with it is by pushing back the first hit, but in certain situations, like if I'm doing it from afar, the first hits don't hit. So you just get this plus on block, like nearly full screen special move that you can just use to launch yourself in on the opponent, which is so cool, especially if you're using it combined with air mobility and you just dash in. Oh, that was actually too close. But like, say I got past but some projectiles or something, and now I'm just plus in their face and there wasn't anything I can do about it because they didn't get to push the first hit back. He's just a really, really solid character. He's good at saying goodbye neutral and he just plays very similar to Tengen, except he just has this little bonus of these interesting projectile setups and also being a demon, and poison. Now, <laughs> oh no, I'm getting too good at ranting and talking about nothing for so long. Now, to the actual things that we go through. So starting with his regular attacks, he's got such good regular attacks, possibly some of the best attack strings in the game. Um, the range on them is, you know, pretty decent. Even with the step forward, he reaches a pretty decent range and a good um, area of effect range. So sometimes it's really good for hitting supports if they're standing like beside him, because he does that big around his body hit so sometimes some characters miss supports a lot when they're flying at them but this guy's pretty good at snuffing them out and also what's really good about them is they do good damage and they're so quick this thing is over before a quarter of the yellow um combo counter is gone and that's the same for all of them the up combo and the down combo they all just end so quickly which means you can get nice big chunks of damage and you can really really easily um like know how much time you have in your combos so you know that if you do have at least a quarter of your combo counter left, you know you're going to be able to get a full attack string in. So if I'm doing just some random combo fodder like this, do 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 Oh see, I still have a quarter left, I know I'll have time to go for a full down combo, I don't have to do anything ending early or anything. It's just so easy to go for combos and get your big chunks of damage and whatever because they're so quick. It's really, really awesome. 
Um, and yeah, they do decent damage as well. The only real... And they all have a purpose as well. Like, the straight one, it keeps the opponent on the ground. If you're going for combos like this. And it's the only one that you can dash cancel into a grab on hit for an unavoidable grab. Not even avoidable by super, mind you. The down combo is useful because it does the most damage and leads to hard knockdown. So if you kind of want to... If you've maybe spent all your meter... Pretend I've done a really long combo here. I can just, like, run away... Use that hard knockdown to build some space while my demon meter builds back and whatever. So yeah, good damage and good knockdown. And the up combo I've actually found really useful as being the main way to go in into your um, projectile setups. Because it's made to... It'll miss the opponent no matter what, which is actually what you want. Because if the opponent blocks it, then you don't get this cool after effects thing. So if you forcibly make it miss, it's really powerful and you can do that using the up combo. So whatever combo I've done... Um, as long as you can go into an up combo, you can do this thing. Oh, yeah, be careful you're not too close to the corner because then it'll accidentally combo. But most of the time that doesn't happen because you're not at the perfect position to end the combo right beside the corner. And I forgot to do an up combo. But yeah, up combo, good for going into your projectile setups. And I kind of, that's my favorite setup to do online because it works so, so much. Doing crazy things, go into a DP, and then if they block it, it's safe because these things come back at you. Oh, cool. Okay, um, speaking of normals, his aerial buttons are also both really good. His aerial regular attacks have a decent um, hitbox going downwards, so he can do an instant jump into them, and it'll actually hit. It has to be pretty quick, but that does mean if you do want to do kind of fancy combos, I don't bother going for them because they're... He can do stuff like... Um... Uh, oh no, <laughs> jump cancels into buttons. Yeah, like this. And no, I have no idea what's optimal using those, but you can. And also his aerial tilt attack is really, really good. Up there with the best in the game. So not only has it does have a really good horizontal hitbox, it's just like a really good angle and the second hit adds so much range to it. And unlike some characters, like uh, some of the entertainment characters, I think Entertainment Tanjiro had this problem, where if only one hit hits, he can't cancel it. The Gyutaro can always cancel into buttons and get a full combo off of it. And it's not punishable at all if the opponent blocks it, which is really amazing. He can even cancel into special moves when it hits. It's just really good and it does what a dive kick should do, which is really, really handy. You can just, you know, move around in the air and it actually does its job. Thank you, dive kick. And then another normal is his strong or armor attack. This is kind of pretty average, nothing bad, which is awesome, but it, it's nothing exceptional. It has pretty decent range, especially if you include the second hit, but usually you won't because the opponent will probably dodge the first one and the second one. But um, yeah, it's around this distance, the first hit will hit. So pretty decent range, um, decently fast, and the charge up is a little slow, I believe. Yeah, a little slow, but also nothing horrible. So, it's an armor attack, it gets the job done. Yeah, that's about it. It leaves the opponent on the ground and you get to get a combo from it. That's about it. Um, His last normal is going to be his grab, which is also really good. It has pretty decent range. I think it's in like the medium section for ranges in this game. It's not a Hinokami Tanjiro uh, reach, but... It's certainly not a water Tanjiro reach. It's definitely an in-between. And it'll around this distance, which is really good considering how fast it is. I think it's as fast as Entertainment Inosuke's grab, which his his is very fast. And Gyutaro's is fast, good ranged, and does good damage. It does a nice big chunk of damage. And being fast and doing a good chunk of damage means it is such a good way of um, ending combos. So take a super simple combo like this. That's an unavoidable grab at the end of the combo. Look how much damage that combo does now because you have grab as a combo ender option. It's, it's crazy. So, really good grab. So, so far, everything has just been really good or just, you know, average or slightly above average. He's got really good attacks, average armor attack, a really good dive kick, and a really good grab. And we haven't even gotten to the things that make him interesting, like his special moves yet. Now, as for his movement, 
Um, I'm really bad at telling the speed of people's dashes, but I'm pretty sure his is average. Maybe it's on the slower side, but I don't think it's as slow as Daki. Maybe it's a level 1 or level 2 dash speed, but I can't really tell you. It's fine. It, it doesn't bother me too much, so I guess that's, that's that. And uh, his parry recovery time um, is okay. It's definitely not the best. It's not, um, who's the one that has a really good one? Susamaru. I think he's just average. And I think that's all of his normal... His normal things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Now we get into some cool stuff. So, special moves. His standing special is kind of interesting because it's a little bit, um... It's a bit bl bland. It doesn't have many uses compared to other things in his toolkit. So his standing special is this. He just has a bunch of stuff in front of him, and uh, that's about it. Mainly, it's going to be used as combo fodder, as adding a good amount of damage into your combos, because I think it's his least um, scaling special move. So if you do this um, a special move early on in your combo, you want it to be this one, and then you can add in your other ones later, but you want to do that one first, because that's how you get some slightly higher damage. And yeah, it's just a really easy tool to extend your combos with. It'll extend off of any button, even the first button. It'll just always connect and it's pretty easy. And that's about it. You don't really use it on guard too much, because on guard, it's not plus, so... But it is, it is safe. So sometimes, if the opponent is really good at punishing this by pushing you back up close and then going for a DP or something, maybe you can end your pressure sequences with this, because it's really fast and leaves you totally safe. Even if they push you back, it's safe. Um, I don't... I can try and demonstrate. Uh, get you to... Get you to block. Do this. Oops. Do this. And yeah, even if it's pushed back, it, it, it's, it's safe. I've tested it. Um, so yeah, you can just throw it out and it will be safe. Not plus. But yeah, mainly it's just combo tools. Adds a bunch of damage to your combos. It is also useful in... Um, let me get it back. When the opponent breaks out of your combos, it's pretty useful. Because depending on how you time it, it can catch them because it has such long active frames. Or if there's a situation where the opponent, you know, gets um, blasted. So not the proper combo ender and they go for the recovery because it has such long active frames You can catch people in their recoveries because it hits on the first possible active frame that they can be hit So that's pretty cool and yeah, like I said depending on when they break out of a combo It can sometimes be really cool to catch them But tilt special is actually even better at that and we'll get to it soon But uh, yeah, that's about it for the standing special special one except for in the air It actually becomes a bit more useful because it still can extends combos for free it bounces the opponent so you get to do free combo extensions like that which is really cool so after any kind of aerial combo if you want to add a bit more damage after your aerial attacks you can do this and still get the bounce which is really nice but also it is plus so if you're like um you know around this range and you're moving around and being on top of their heads whoops that wasn't even it you're plus and you're on top of them so you can outmatch them if they try to do anything so that's just another really good aerial option he has so he kind of has the three ranges now so he has like around here where he can go for his dive kick he has like all the way over here where he can go for his sickle slash even further probably really really far and then if you are hovering around on top of their head you can make yourself plus and go for this and it'll start combos as well so yeah that's his special one nothing too crazy but we go up from here so his tilt special is really really cool. It does a lot really. It's his anti it's his screw neutral tool, it's his combo tool, it's his pressure tool. Um but it's also kind of his biggest weakness in a laggy connection because it's really hard to use in a laggy connection because of its follow up. Its follow up if you is just if you press the special button again, he does this extra follow up where he slashes in the air. And this follow-up slash cannot be cancelled into anything. So as you can see, the first few hits are so safe. They can be cancelled into regular buttons. I can keep going. Kill special, buttons. Kill special, buttons. Kill special, even cancel um, into a jump. Oh, see, I accidentally did it there. You can cancel it into a jump away. So it's super good, super safe. 
With the follow-up, if you accidentally do it, it can't be cancelled into anything, and it has so much recovery. I was mashing backdash there, and I only just got the backdash. It is ridiculous how much recovery on this is. It, if you ever do this accidentally, and it doesn't hit the opponent, you're getting punished. They could be full screen, and they're still going to punish you. Which makes it really scary online, because sometimes when you're in really laggy situations, um, it's hard to hit confirm things, and you kind of press buttons multiple times to make sure they come out at whatever the right time is. But you can't do that with this special move, because if you do accidentally press it twice, you'll get this follow-up and just die. So you've got to make sure when you're online that you're only doing the first hit, and that you make sure you're timing it. You never press tilt special twice in a row. Never do it. Or it could end in disaster. But anyways... There's a lot of really, really good things about this special move. Let's not let's not dwell on what's bad about it. There is a lot that's really good about it. So, as I mentioned, it can be cancelled into buttons. So I can do a full attack string into this, and all of this is a true block string. So the opponent can't switch out with their sidekick. They can't do a DP or anything. They can't fit anything in this. They can't do any kind of armor or an ultimate. This is just a true block string. And you can do it over and over and over again. Now, obviously, there has to be a weakness. And yes, there is. The opponent can push back the first hit. And uh, I'm not, not going to bother demonstrating. If you play Gyutaro, you know. It's very similar to the likes of Daki and Tengen, who have very similar tilt specials, where you can push back the first hit of it, and then it makes the second hit not hit. And then they can mash an armor attack or DP or something to punish you. What makes it stronger than the likes of Tengen and Daki, though, is that he can actually cancel it even on whip. So even if it doesn't hit the opponent, he can mash buttons afterwards. So even if they do, you know, do the pushback and he doesn't get to, uh, like, the second hit doesn't hit, they can't just press buttons against you because you're allowed to cancel it into buttons as well. They have to go for an armor attack or DP or something, which does make it significantly safer than Daki and Tengen's. Because where they will get punished by full combos, Kyutaro will only really get punished by a DP or an armor attack. Which is still bad, um, but it's it's a lot better than <laughs> getting punished by a full combo. So yeah, it's really, really good. And depending on what kind of opponent you're fighting against, you can kind of go crazy with this. If the opponent doesn't know how to push you back at the right time, I'm going to give you the pass to abuse this. Because <laughs> if Ogar gave you... And just mash this special move until their guard breaks. Because you might as well. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my goodness. It's pretty crazy. And uh, yeah. Because he's able to use it in the air. And it goes just as far in the air. It makes it an amazing mobility tool as well. So you can be jumping around doing your backflips and stuff. And then whenever you decide to go in. You're in. And when you do it from a distance, it's even stronger, as I mentioned in the intro, because the first hits won't actually hit, and you'll only get the second hit. And then they can't push back the first hit and make the second hit whiff, so they only get the second hit, and the second hit can be cancelled into buttons, and you just get to go straight into your pressure, and it's just a free way in to be on top of them, and you're plus, and you're crazy, and you're, you're going wild. So, because this move is so strong, I don't know if there's anything I else have left to say about it. You just... The main ways you're going to be using it is, like, in your combos, it's super easy, just like your regular special. It cancels into things really easily, and you can just use it as super, super simple ways of extending ground and combos, which is really good for Gyutaro, especially if you're making use of his, um, grab resets, because you want the opponent on the ground for those. And, uh, yeah, just leads to super, super easy combos, and of course it poisons the opponent. And when you're using it as an anti-neutral tool, you can use it from a distance, and only the second hit will hit, you'll get a full combo, and even if they block, you just get to mash buttons, and there's nothing they can do about it, because that becomes a true block string, which is totally crazy. And if you're using it in pressure, you just have to be a little bit careful, because the opponent can push back and go for a DP after the first hit. Um, but that means you can go for certain things to like bait them, like just do a few hits like this. Or do a, f a few hits into a jump cancel, because jump cancels actually can be lead to some of his really good combo paths. So if you jump cancel into sidesteps or something, you'll beat their DPs, of course. Or you can go a few attacks into his standing special, and then they'll do their DP afterwards, and then you get a punish on it. So there are ways to play around it, but just to be careful, against the strong opponents, you can't be too mindless, unfortunately. <laughs> but it's a really, really strong special move, and has lots of uses. It's probably going to be your most used special move for this character. Now, his guard special, or his DP, 
is a DP. Very similar to Rui's in some ways, but it has a few ways of making it a little, a little bit different, a little bit crazy. So if you just press the button once, it does 5 hits, about 700 damage, and it leaves the opponent in a crumple state where they are, you know, in a combo okay state, so you can get a combo on them. But you can actually hold it down, and you can hold it down for quite a while, so I'm going to hold it down for the entire time. Now it does 15 hits, does more damage, not a huge amount more, but it lasts for way, way longer. And it, its hitbox gets even bigger, so it can be over here not hitting Sabito at the start. And then, oh, okay, that was a little bit far. And it eventually gets big enough to hit the opponent. It isn't as big as it appears, it seems, which is unfortunate. But um, I think it's a little bit of a gimmick, especially holding it down the whole way, because as you can see, you don't get too much more damage, and you also lose your combo, because it kind of blasts the opponent away. But you can do intermediate, so I can hold it really, really long and not go the full distance, and see he's still in the crumple state here. And... That means you can, you know, still get kind of combos, but I don't really see a point in going for it because it uses, you're getting a red combo. So if you hold it down, you're just getting less time in your red combo. Like, what am I going to do here? I can get two hits with my attack string. Great. That's awesome. So if I ever want to use my DP, I kind of just tap it and then go for some kind of quick combo into a reset, something like this. Hello? Something like that. That's a lot better than getting a DP. That's, you know, third of the opponent's life. I'll take that any day. Um, the only other time that I would use it differently is if you're, like, definitely using it as a read tool. So if the opponent has a support out and they're near you, you know they're going for a grab or something, and you, there's just chaos going around near you, you can just hold this down. And if you know, maybe, maybe you're up against a stupid opponent or something, and you know they're going to run into it, maybe they're doing a water wheel or something, you can just hold it down and they'll run into it. Like, like noobs, and they'll just walk inside your thing, and then you can let go of it, get a combo, and whoops your uncle, you've gotten a lovely thing. It's also actually really good in the Gyutaro matchup, because, well, I don't have an enemy Gyutaro here, but if this projectile was out, so say if another Gyutaro has put this projectile out against me, and I know it's coming at me, I, and I'm doing my combo, I don't want to get hit by it, so I can pretend those were going to hit me just then. I can use my DP in the middle of a combo, then the projectiles will not hit me, they'll just go straight through me, and it's really satisfying when you do this, when the, you know your opponent's like, haha, my things are gonna hit you, and then you do this, and then they don't, and you still get to extend your combo, that is satisfying stuff, that's how you deal mental damage. <laughs> and, I'm not trying to flex, but I have done that a few times myself, and it feels real great. Uh, and yeah, that's about everything about this. It's a, it's a decent DP with a good hitbox, and it has a few little gimmicky things where you can hold it down. And you obviously can't do it in the air, and I think that means we are getting to exciting stuff with his demon skills. So, his demon skill 1 is... Um, this thing. This, like, cyclone that comes out of his chest. Let me get in an angle where you can kind of see it. Excuse me, let me change angle, bro. I don't like the cameras in this game. So, oh, now I'm out of demon meter. It makes this, like, cyclone come out of his chest. It does a decent chunk of damage, and he's almost instantly armored. So it's very similar to Darky's demon skill one, in that it's, like, a really, really good get-off-me tool. And compared to other characters in this, or everything in this game, you wouldn't say it's a really strong tool. Like, it doesn't lead to combos, it isn't plus on block, it doesn't do a huge amount of damage. But for Gutero, it's actually really, really useful because it's his only safe reversal. It's his, yeah, and if you don't know what reversal is, it's just, it's his only safe, like, invincible, armored-esque move. So all of his armor attacks, you know, as a demon, he doesn't have any real way of making himself safe. This is unsafe, that's unsafe. All those things are unsafe, but this one, it's not plus, but it's safe. So sometimes you just need an option where you're like, I don't really know if the opponent's gonna press buttons or not, but I, I'm really scared of him putting out, like, a like his attacks or whatever and I, I'm, I'm getting screwed up in this pressure right now you can go for this and it's just your safe get off me tool it's like yo just get out of here and unfortunately unlike Darky and stuff it's not plus and starting combos and things which hers is pretty crazy let's be honest but his is just okay but he really needs it you need something that you can be like I, I just gotta say get off me and I, I don't know what's going on I just need you to get out of here 
And a lot of the time you end up ending rounds in this way because it just will do um, just the right amount of damage to like end out your opponent's life. So if they press buttons, you armor through it and the armor starts up practically instantly, um, which is good and it's better. It starts up faster than things like this. So it's a really good get off me tool. And as you saw before, it does actually do a really decent amount of guard damage. So if, say if I've done like one run in, this might actually break their guard or it's very close to breaking. Yeah. So if you have done a decent amount of guard pressure, say you've done like a run in, done a few loops of these, and the opponent's having a hard time getting you off of them, you can cancel into this and their guard's probably gonna break. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I haven't actually used it like that yet, but um, it seems like it's main, main time in the round that it'll be really useful is at the end, because it's a really good round ender, because it's like, yo, get off me, I'm gonna take that last bit of your life and you're dead. Or, if they're blocking and they've only got a little bit of life, you can break their guard and pick out their last little bit of life with a combo. Which is pretty fun and handy. And that's basically it for that special move. It's got a decently big hitbox, armor starts up instantly, and it does okay damage, and its main function is just being his safe reversal. Now, for his Tilt Demon skill, this is kind of the essence of what makes this character more interesting than anyone else in the game. And it makes what makes him, you know, not just a boring old slayer. So, this projectile, I'm gonna throw from afar so you can see it move across the screen. It's a slow moving projectile that when it hits the opponent, puts him in a crumple state and applies poison, just like anything else, but that doesn't really matter. But it puts him in a crumple state so you can follow up behind it and get a nice full cool combo, whatever you wanna do. And you're always gonna get pretty decent damage off of this, even without spending too much meter. And you do want to make sure you kind of do a as long as a combo that is as long as possible because it gives you more time to build back your demon gauge. So as you can see now, now if I run away for just a few seconds, I'll have both my demon gauges back and I'm not going to get killed next time I get hit by my opponent. So it's pretty good as a projectile if you want to, you know, throw it out in the neutral. But do beware, if you're against any kind of Slayer, um, its ability as a neutral tool is severely weakened because what do Slayers love to do? They love to bring out their friends. And if there's ever a um, support on the screen, it just hits them and does nothing. It doesn't go through them. It doesn't even go into the, the, like, the stopped version. It just hits them and disappears. So that is really, really awful. So you don't really end up using it too much against Slayers if you know you're against a player that likes to bring out their support in neutral because they can just instantly nullify it with their support, which is really, really bad. But against Demons or whatever, or someone that doesn't use their supports in neutral as much, it's a really good tool that you can use to get in because then you can chase behind it and get combos off of it and it just makes your cut combos even more damaging than they would have been before. Oops, that was meant to be a grab. And obviously the other use where it gets even more interesting is when it doesn't hit the opponent. So if you're far enough away, it will stop and turn into this orb on the screen and then, you know, put the opponent into the crumple state again. And the crumple state from the, the the, that late projectile is actually even longer than the regular crumple state so it's super super easy to get combos off of it and there's two main ways that i like to use this as a tool whether it's at um at round start because a lot of the time you know when you're waiting for the next round to start you people are just doing a bunch of this like kind of staying away from each other because you're not like walking at each other in the round start like this like dancing most of the time people are just oh god how do i get them away <laughs> i like this then that's the perfect time for you to go for something like this especially against demons and then you get to summon it out and chances are that they'll dodge it or it'll just not reach them and then you have this thing out on the screen and booyah and the second way i like to set it up is off of an up combo because this just goes straight past the opponent you get to go for a dash in and you're on top of them and generally it's a really good way of just, you know, getting it um, to not hit them. Sorry. Because <laughs> the worst thing that can happen when you throw out this projectile um, is have it hit the opponent, kind of. Because it's pretty rare that it'll just hit the opponent straight up. If it does, great. But a lot of the time, this will happen. And they'll block it. And then you get literally nothing. Like, I guess it's a bit plus and you can run in and go for a grab that's unavoidable. If that's not that good compared to the other stuff and a lot of the time you don't want to dash up and get a grab because you have a chance of getting a combo but uh 
Yeah. So having it hit the opponent is kind of the worst case scenario. So you need to have good ways of having it not hit the opponent. So that's what I was talking about. Having the really far round start, throwing it out at round start, or using your up combo. Oh, and you don't want to be facing the wall at the very end of your combo or else it's going to flop again. Oops. So you do an up combo, cancel it into this, and then dash in on top of them. And it's actually even better for an opponent that likes to quick recover. Because it makes your dash in really, really meaty. So if I have my opponent set to an AI, and then when they recover from your up combo and you've set out the thing, the dash that you throw out afterwards hits them on basically, possibly the first frame that they are able to be hit. Which is really, really good. Which means they don't really have time to go for much else. Especially on the distances. Um... I guess it can change depending on their height they're in and their combo and everything. But generally, it's really good and at hitting them super, super quickly. Which is super, super strong. Because you're on top of them, you're applying pressure as soon as they wake up, and then these projectiles will come in and beat them up later. And the main stuff... The main... What am I saying? The point of having this projectile out is not to extend your combos, because as you can see in the combo I just did then, all it really does if you're hitting the opponent is add some extra damage into the combos you're doing already. But where it's really useful is before you get your combos. So a lot of the time, if you, when the opponent gets hit, they're gonna be, um... Or they're gonna, like, block yourself afterwards. So you get to go for some crazy-ass stuff, because you know, whatever you do, you've got these blood triangles that are gonna fly back towards you and have your back for you because as i showed in the beginning um, uh even if you're getting hit these things are gonna fly in and beat the opponent up while they're hitting you and then you get to get a full combo for it so you can do like absolutely ridiculous stuff like run up press some buttons go in for a dp if you think they're gonna press buttons or you can hold it down so it goes even longer <coughs> gotta drink some water And by the time that you've done a little bit of ridiculous stuff, these things are going to be flying in, and it's if you time it correctly, it could just make things safe, or they could just ruin your opponent's punish. So after I do a DP, Subito starts to hit me with a few attacks, then these things are flying at him, and I get to get a full combo, and look how much more I get than Sabito gets in this kind of situation. Especially if I did a full combo into... Um... into the up combo, where we set it up. And if he's gotten hit by those because he tried to punish me, now I'm getting to go in for a full combo. Look how much of his life is suddenly disappearing. Definitely, definitely worth it to do some crazy ass YOLO stuff. And as I mentioned in the beginning, um, common reactions that people have to having the setup out is they'll either be like super oops that was not the right special move they will either be super patient and just stand there blocking the entire time kind of like this ai is and what you want to do against people like this is just keep dashing because they're playing super patiently and you can just break their guard for free and they're it like as time goes on they're gonna be like oh i know those things are coming after me so the more that you do, the more they're going to want to be patient, and you end up getting like three cycles of dash-ins, and their guard just breaks, because they just freak out and they don't know what to do, because they're just scared of these projectiles coming in on them. And it's it's really funny, and really makes your opponent think about, oh crap, how do I respond to this next time? So that's an option. And the other option that the opponent will do sometimes is tr really try to get go for a grab, like really, really fish for a grab, because a grab is the only thing that will kind of save them from the projectiles because the cinematic from the grab deletes the things on the screen. So the opponent will kind of often be fishing for a grab, which is where you can also go for this, because there's no time in between um, a dash in for the opponent to go for a grab. So you can just do this over and over again, and it'll beat their grabs. And then if it hits, obviously you go to get get to go for a full combo. And yeah, they just, they just lose, and they'll take even more damage because of the things hitting them. So yeah. It's a really, really fun setup, and you can go for some try-hard stuff, like... 
I'm sure there's interesting things where you can throw it out and like go for a full charge thing and then it can break their guard or the something happen. I, there's some really cool things, but a lot of the time what I like to do is I like to just go crazy, go for some crazy unsafe stuff and like fish my opponent to punish me and then let them get hit by the projectiles and I get to punish them. It's really, really fun. Now for his boosts and super and stuff. His boost combo ender, um, it doesn't have the utility of Darkies. Like it doesn't um, have a super hard long knockdown, but it just does a nice chunk of damage at the end of combos. So you see this combo here does a lot of damage and that's about, that didn't even include like a grab reset or anything. That was just a pure combo. That's kind of the amount of damage we would be getting if we did the, the grab resets. So lots of damage from that. And in surge mode, he has a super easy time um, going back and forth from special moves. Just like a water Tanjiro, because he can link them together super easily and he's a bunch of combo extending special moves. <clears throat> and his ultimate is really good. It has like some of the quickest startup in this game. It's like, as soon as the, the slowdown is end, he throws out these things like instantly and has good range. And it's just a really good tool. Um, particularly good at, you know, uh, beating the opponent and other things. Obviously it's good in combos, but it is really good in neutral for like, smacking an opponent that tries to do something, or getting a punish or something, or interrupting something, because it's just, like, instant. After the time freeze, boom. Instant. It's actually so quick that you can actually get it off of weird things where you wouldn't expect to be able to get it. Like, stuff like this. The opponent isn't here for that long, are they? Yep, long enough to get this lickety split ultimate. Which is kind of crazy. The only situation that I found that, you, like, you would expect it to hit, but it actually doesn't, is after the tilt special follow-up. You can't actually do that hit. There's just so much recovery that it just doesn't work. And as you can see that, they just get to recover and block it. But that means that it can be easily comboed off of, like, any of his attack string. A lot of characters, like, that wouldn't combo because they need a little bit um, more hit stun on things to combo into their ultimate. Yutaro? No. You can just combo it off of literally anything. Which is a lovely feeling, because at any time during your combos you can be like, Oop! Ultimate! Killed ya. Which is pretty cool. And you do that wicked laugh that he does. Okay, and so that's all of his stuff. Oh, um, I didn't mention it, but he also has a really, really good amount of healing factor when he... Oh, that's the wrong character. But when he goes into boost and surge mode... So yeah, really bit this was that was just boost mode and it's almost half of his life and then you can do it again in surge mode to get another near half back. So he's a, a big healer like Akaza, but he also has quite low health. Okay, so that's all of his stuff, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Those are all his moves. Now let's talk about the combos, because combos are fun. We've already talked about the game plan and all of the buttons and how you want to use them. Now let's just talk about what happens when you get hits. So, he's a very, very combo-free character, like just the likes of Tengen. I think Tengen is probably the most similar character to Gyutaro when it comes to combos. Um, because they both just are, have special moves that just easily link into each other and link into attacks. And you kind of just do different iterations of this depending on how you want to end your combo. And the end of the combo is the only thing that really changes depending on what you want to achieve. It's just the amount of meter and the ender. Which I guess is like all combos, but for Yutaro, it's just so easy. And also someone said this in a comment, and I super agree, that he's such a consistent character. He, his combos never feel like they're just going to accidentally drop. Sometimes with Daki, you're a bit scared that things are just going to like flop and the opponent's just going to fall out and it's going to be weird and you're going to get mashed out and stuff. That stuff doesn't really happen with Yutaro. His combos feel super, super like safe to do. Nothing crazy is going to happen. You're just going to get your combo and you no... Know, weird stuff is going to screw you over. So, um, a simple combo route off of regular attacks will probably be a few hits into one of your special moves, either your Sickle Slash or your Flying Blood Sickles, your special one or your Tilt Special. Using your special one earlier in your combo will lead to more damage because it has slightly less scaling, but your Tilt Special is the one you probably want to be using because it's better for pressure and it's what I end up using mostly at the beginning of my combos because if my opponent is blocking and, you know, it's hard to react early to things in a combo, I end up doing a lot of this in my combos. Not the second hit! Don't do the second hit! But, um, a bunch of this. And if I don't react and see if the opponent hits, well, it's still good and I'm plus and I still get to keep my stuff going, which is not the case with my special one. 
So, off you do like three hits into a special move. Oops. So, three hits, special move. Then, if you want to keep it cheap, you can do a full attack string into another special move, and then into whatever end you like. And as you see, it does about 3,000 and a bit damage, depending on what you do. And then going in for the grab reset, which is unavoidable, it's a big, big chunk of damage for a single combo, which is pretty awesome. You can make it do more damage if you, you know, increase the amount of stuff in it. So there it did 3,400 damage. And just, you know, add a little bit more, but I don't think it's really worth spending too much more meter than what you have to. I think two special moves is good enough. And as you can see, he has a pretty damaging character when you um, include this grab. And yeah, I have tested this grab after the full attack ring. Going into this grab, the opponent can't jump, they can't ultimate, they can't even boost. I'm 99% sure that it is completely unavoidable. Which is ridiculous, because when you include the poison, and you include the grab, these are two things that are completely unscaled at the end of any long combo. And that just means you're getting huge chunks of damage at the end of your combos, making every combo do a nice big chunk of damage. Um, so now that we've got that basic routing down, you can just do buttons into either of your special one or your tilt special. Like, anything you want, even the first button. Like, you can just layer them in as much as you want, completely freely, there's nothing to think about. Just think about how much meter you want to spend, and if you spend less meter, then you're just going to have to do more normal attacks. That's literally all you have to think about. And if you've no meter, then just use this as a combo ender, then run away and hope you get some meter back soon. <laughs> Um, and then you can use these similar principles, like if I get a red combo, neutral special, few hits into my tilt special, and then go for a grab, and then see I've got the poison and the grab at the end of the combo, and that is just so much damage off of a, an armor attack with a red combo. And obviously the same goes for his, um, what is it called? Dive kick? You can do this. <clears throat> But also, you know, if you don't want to hit confirm things with your special one, it's going to be similar damage if you just do a few attacks and do stuff like this. Oops, don't do the second hit. Don't do the second hit. I'm getting lousy because I'm recording a video and getting lazy. You can do stuff like this, and because of the big chunk of damage, it doesn't really matter if your combo is a little bit shorter. Or less damaging. And, uh, yeah. Because these combo paths are so simple, there's not really any... <laughs> like specific or interesting combo advice I can give you off of different things like if you land this you're gonna be doing the same kinds of combos just a bunch of hits and then just try and like watch the combo counter to see how much time you have left at the end of your combos and um yeah the, oh yeah we'll talk about the types of combo enders he has so the main combo ender that I like to use the most is obviously the full attack string into the grab because that's like the guaranteed way of getting a grab and the grab is a ton of damage but if you want to be a little bit more frisky, like rub it in the opponent's face to you going for these resets, you can go for things um, like... And go for a grab off of this, because this will refresh the poison, get a new set of poison to deplete at the very end of the combo, and it will actually do a bit more damage, but they can avoid that grab, but it still happens rarely because people aren't, aren't ready for resets all the time. So that's a lot of damage and another way you can end your combos. And they're both resets. <clears throat> or you can also, um, if you're really low on meter and you, you know, you spent all your meter in, in your combo going for special moves. Oh, he's actually gonna die before I can even see it, show it. But say you've already low on meter or you spent a lot of meter in your combo for some reason. Just go for your down combo ender. You get a nice long hard knockdown and you can move away and let your meter build from afar while you throw out projectiles or whatever and stay safe. And it's also a really damaging combo ender so there's no point to not doing it. And the other combo ender is using your up combo. Oh, I might be you. And then you dash in and either the opponent will be blocking and you're going for pressure or you'll do something crazy and they'll punish it and then we've we've talked about the, the the tilt demon skill projectile it's amazing and the up combo is just a really good way of going into it because it just goes straight past the opponent and i love that nothing else he does i found works as well as this 
because it just goes straight through the opponent and a lot of the time it goes like off the screen so they can't even delete it and the projectiles are just bound to come in from a weird angle that they can't delete i love 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 that and uh yeah um i think that's his main combo routing if you do accidentally get a follow-up with a sickle slash no worries just go for a dash cancel go for some kind of combo like this I guess not like that. Um, be careful with the endo, you don't want to embarrass yourself. But yeah, you can dash cancel it and you can react it pretty easily. You can do it quite late. So if you do realize like, oops, I accidentally pressed the button twice and now my regular combo isn't going to work. You'd be like, oh, dash cancel and go in for some kind of combo like this. And yeah, you'll get okay damage. You won't get any kind of great setups because of the opponent being airborne, but at least you're still getting a combo and you don't totally flop. Oh, and um, if you are in a situation where you, you know, are low on meter, um, how do I get low on meter? Um, I recommend kind of just, if you've done a full attack string, just ending your combo with your demon skill and then using your tilt demon skill afterwards and just completely spending everything so that you can just go for a boost afterwards. And then you're really getting the most out of your boost. If you spent literally, what was that? The wrong one. Um... If you make if you use everything in your combo, like why not use a boost at the end? So I, that's kind of my philosophy towards like cashing out in my combos. Use it as a combo ender, then go for this. Maybe it'll hit the opponent, maybe and you'll get a combo from it, or maybe it'll miss them, but then you basically just want to go for a boost instantly and get all that stuff back. So just make sure you've used all of your resources, put the setups on the screen, get your damage. And then get it all back. And when you get it all back, you get so much life back. It's lovely. <laughs> um. But yeah, I'm sorry to be lame, but combo wise, that's basically it. You're gonna be doing a few buttons, and you're either gonna be going for really secure resets like this to get big chunks of damage, or you're going to be going for less secure resets where you go for stuff like this. Or you're going to be going for an up combo so you can set up your tilt demon skill. Um, or when you're doing this one, you can, oops, <laughs> when you're doing this one, you can also go for an armor attack um, if you don't want your opponent to mash on you. Oops. Or even like a DP or something. <laughs> you shouldn't do it fast enough that it combos, but yeah. I usually end up just going for the grab because it's a big chunk of damage, so why wouldn't you? And uh, yeah, combo-wise, that's basically Yutaro. Oh wait, one more thing. I think we should show, in honor of day one characters coming out, I think you need to show a TOD. And this one I actually think looks kind of cool, I admit. Oh, this isn't gonna be a TOD because it's against Abigail, but just imagine it's a TOD. Pretend this is Akada, and he'll die. Boom. <laughs> okay. That was the Day 1 Beginner's Guide for Gyutaro. He's a very strong character, strong pressure, good combos, good damage, and really cool, funny stuff with his Tilt Demon skill. Really fun guy. I've enjoyed playing him online. I'm sure if you've seen my Let's Learn video or just my other online videos with him, you'll see how much fun I have with him, and I think you should try him out. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye!